Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jiang Zhao. Uh, we'll go, I go by Jay-Z. Great to be here, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about nudging, specifically how we can nudge a zero-waste future. And this is a, a summary of my work on recycling composting in the last couple of years. So I would like to start with a quick poll. Um, this is a question to you, uh, for those of you in the audience. The question I have for you is which nudge do you think is the most effective at changing behaviors? So we have a couple options. The first one is a nudge that draws people's attention or a nudge that prevents forgetting. So very much like reminders or a nudge that increases people's motivations or a nudge that reduces the effort involved. And finally, uh, a nudge that changes people's perception. So how they view the topic. So I think a poll is gonna jump up in front of you right now and please uh, select the nudge that you think is the most effective at changing behaviors. I'll give you a few seconds to vote. Okay. All right, so uh, for those of you who have voted, um, thank you. And I'm gonna show you the answer. So based on our research, uh, which is a meta-analysis with over 200 studies and 4 million participants uh, on nudge, what we found was effort reducing nudges are the most effective. They actually have the largest effect size in randomized field experiments. Um, and that tends to be more effective than any other nudge that we've looked at so far. And the second most effective nudge is attention grabbing ones. So if you can draw people's attention to something that will also lead to behavior change. The least effective nudge in our meta-analysis is actually intrinsic motivation. And that includes something like signing a pledge or making a commitment. It doesn't mean that they, these interventions don't work. It just means that based on the study so far, these nudges are less effective than the other nudges. Okay, so now I'm gonna showcase a few of those nudges in my studies that reduces uh, waste. So the first study we did was to reduce effort. Um, there's several behavioral barriers to recycling and composting uh, that include being in a rush, having no time, or simply it's too complicated and people have to walk through a lot of doors to recycle and compost. Um, so we came up with a, a nudge, which reduces the physical effort that's required in executing that action. Oh, I see the result of the poll. Yes, most of you are right. So thank you, this is, this is encouraging. Uh, yes, most of you chose the effort reduction nudge as, as the most effective, that's awesome. Okay, so by physical effort, what we mean was simply move the bins closer to people's doors. So this is either the bins uh, placed at five feet away from your door or all the way at 163 feet away from your door. And what we found was um, composting, recycling, this is both paper recycling, container recycling, increased by over 130% when the bins are five feet away from your door versus 41 feet away from your door. Now, this is a, a small change in the environment that actually generates a huge change in behaviors. And this is, this is probably by far the most effective intervention I've seen so far. We've also, uh, so this is actually, I think this nudge can uh, help a lot of cities around the world like Vancouver to achieve zero waste goals in the next uh, 20 years. Another way to reduce effort is to make the decision-making process easier. So a cognitive barrier is uh, when, when it comes to recycling and composting is that the signage is often too complicated and too difficult to understand. So how can we reduce the cognitive effort? So in this study, we actually uh, mouth, oh, actually we, we track people's motion as they sort uh, objects on a computer screen. And we either made the signage pictures or texts. Uh, we only, uh, we either presented yes items or having both yes and no items, um, or we showed the order of the bins in a consistent manner or showed a random order of bins every single time. And we looked at people's sorting efficiency, which basically is accuracy divided by response time. So the more accurate you are, 
the less time it takes you, the more efficient you are at sorting. So what we found was something striking as well. Uh, having pictures uh, increased sorting efficiency by 25% compared to text. So straightforward implication there is only show pictures, not text on the signage. Having these yes items only increased sorting efficiency by 12% compared to showing both. So again, implication is only show yes items, forget about the prohibited items. And finally, having a consistent ordering of the bins increased efficiency by 37% compared to a random order. So the city of Vancouver has actually uh, taken our insights into a practice or into implementation. They standardize the signage across the city, which only involves pictures, and the order is consistent across uh, the city. So that's great to see. Um, we want to further look at plastic waste because this is this is an increasing global problem. Um, every year, 20 million tons of plastic waste enters the marine ecosystems. And this volume has increased under the COVID-19 pandemic because of the proliferation of medical use, of medical equipment and single takeout, single plastic uh, items like, the, like takeout containers. So the behavior barrier for plastic waste reduction is that people often are unaware of the downstream consequences of disposing a plastic item. So, so in, in this case, we are using a different tactic, which is drawing attention uh, to the downstream consequences. And the way we did this was we worked with um, OceanWise and, and an office building in downtown Vancouver. We put marine animals trapped in plastic debris on the signage. So this is our attempt at drawing people's attention to the downstream consequences of plastic waste on, uh, in the ocean. We also tried pledge uh, making, so asking people to make a pledge to be plastic wise. Uh, it turns out that the only effective intervention here is the signage with the animal uh, trapped in plastic debris. That actually led to a reduction um, in plastic waste uh, from baseline interventions. So this, the implication here is to highlight uh, the downstream consequences of plastic waste for people at the time of disposal. Another study we ran was to, to provide feedback. So I talked about effort reduction at first. Uh, reducing effort doesn't necessarily tell you what objects should go to which bin. So it doesn't help you sort, it just makes sorting slightly easier. Um, so one behavior barrier to, to correct sorting is we rarely get feedback on our sorting decisions in daily life. Nobody ever tells us, oh, you did it right or wrong. I think they're starting to do that in China, but I think it's, 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 it's more, more than just feedback. There's a lot of judgment associated with that as well. So how can we reduce contamination, which is sorting errors using feedback? We ran a, uh, we designed a sorting game. Basically an object that appears on the screen and you have to sort it on one of the four uh, bins on the screen and you get a feedback in terms of whether you did it right or wrong. Um, so correct or wrong, or should go to garbage instead, for instance. And what we found was the feedback improved sorting accuracy by 30%. And this benefit persisted even after three weeks after learning. So there's some persistent uh, uh, learning effects going on. And this is, this is it, it categorized under the perception nudge. Okay, so I think this is a take home point for nudge designers to reduce waste, uh, including plastic waste, which is to make recycling and composting easy, both physically easy and cognitively easy. Um, that means make, make the signage easy to read or easy to understand. My rule of thumb is make sure that within 10 seconds, people know what to do with the signage. Also make the consequences of inaction salient. So they know that the damage is being done to the environment. And lastly, we can use sorting games uh, to provide timely feedback to correct any sorting errors. Okay, I wanna thank you for your attention. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter or through email. And I look forward to engaging with you later. Thank you.